friends, welcome to another weekly energy video. This is for the week of June 26th through July 2nd. Um, the theme for this week is generosity. We're continuing with the self-compassion of this month, the kind of compassion that can help you ride this wave of release, surrender. Um, it's a gentle release. It's not visceral. Although, hold on, it could be visceral. But I guess I'm just trying to say it's like more of the inner world. Paradigms of our inner world are being broken. They're being released. Allow yourself the amount of compassion that will allow you to ride this wave. If you try to resist, that's when things become turbulent. When we're, when we're resisting change, that's when we really get in those feelings of discomfort and... Um, anxiety or overthinking, worrying. And the trick to this could be asking yourself this question. What has been gradually changing? Because remember, cancer can remind us that change is gradual. What has been changing gradually that with our skills of perceptiveness we can allow ourselves to come around and to see more clearly. What is our perception catching up to? Wow. We got the full moon in Cancer, south node, and new moon in Cancer. A lot of Cancer energy. Welcome to Cancer season. We have arrived. <laughs> so the full moon Cancer says a personal issue reaches resolution. So this is the energy of like really um, the end of a conflict or something just coming into balance. South Node is a reminder to not let your past hold you back. The thing about South Node is, is that it's also like our past life karma. It's what we come into this world already knowing and understanding. South Node, in other words, is your comfort zone. What is surrounding this comfort zone area? for you. Everything that you've learned up until this point in your life, the chaos of it all, if you will, this is the energy of finding the beauty and the structure within the thing. And what else? New Moon Cancer, you and your loved ones are safe. It's really wanting, to, you, wanting us to be open and perceptive to change. Not just to change, to expression, to be the change. Um, this coming weekend, at the end of this week, we have a Leo moon. And some advice for the Leo moon might be like, with this energy, is that every time you pursue your dreams, you remind other people they can also be pursuing their dreams. It's about seeing a way forward by having an appreciation for the thing in your life right now, um, an appreciation for this like bird's eye view. So sometimes I take bird's eye view energy as like, be, like detaching yourself from the situation, but it's not without feeling. It's not without feeling at all. It's about having the feelings and knowing the greater truth of them versus letting them sweep you up. Ride that wave. Don't get stuck in the undertow of it because it's telling you where you need to go. We have the magician underneath. Where is he? The magician is that manifesting power. The magician is a reminder that, you know, it's a messenger. This is also Gemini peeking in. So this could be messages, communication, um, the magician is a bit of a tricky energy. If you know about the magician, like on a deeper level, he is manifest, but he's also magic. It's about cr having everything that you need to create the world that you desire, but it's also a bit like making fun of the 3D paradigm. <laughs> As in, we don't always receive things the way that we expect them to. The, the things we're working towards don't always manifest in the way that we, in our minds, perceive that they will arrive. 
in that form. So we're having a confirmation of some conflict being resolved, right? This personal issue reaches a resolution. You and your loved ones are safe. Don't let your past hold you back. It's almost like it's saying you are living the life that you've always wanted in so many ways. The work we've done this month in June to release the old paradigm is supposed to move your perception toward acknowledging and appreciating the way that your work has produced the results. Your work has produced the results and that is valuable. So this is what I'm talking about when, I, when we say realizing your value, seeing that everything is connected. And it has been gradual. Maybe it hasn't been overnight. So maybe we, we didn't notice and we wouldn't have noticed unless we took some time to sit with what's happening around us, meditate, you know, make time for yourself. That's a really important one. Make time for yourself. Have compassion for yourself. What does the card say? I love to see the Six of Cups. The Hierophant is here. This is about uh, some sort of ritual. Um, I feel like um, there's a couple messages here that I'm getting. One of them is like use uh, ritual and good habits um, to produce harmony in your life. Like, what can you do every day? Like, what is the simplest thing you can do every day to create more balance within your life, like on, on an emotional sphere? Oh, boy. We actually have three fives on the table. Five, five, five. Portends change, you know. Uh, we also have two sixes. So I feel like there is a progression here. We're definitely processing something. I see inspired action as a way to um, balance conflict. So uh, there's the conflict showing up. This personal issue reaches a resolution. So it's almost like find harmony within yourself first. When you are in a good place, you can take inspired action to balance uh, the more external things in your life. It's almost like saying take care of your inner world and your outer world will come and follow. We have the King of Cups, a really, really beautiful energy because it's showing me that you've mastered your emotions. You're not letting your feelings, your emotions take over um, what could potentially be in your life right now, circumstances, or maybe just things coming up from you. Like, where is it coming from? From you or from the outer world? I'm also getting a message that it's time to take a chance on something. Um, because I have the full energy and remember last week and the week before that we had the world card showing up um, and then also we had judgment was a powerful energy this crossroads so maybe not everybody but I feel like a good portion of people are going to wait out like they're like you're I'm, I'm sensing that someone is patiently waiting out some sort of period of time before taking this leap of faith. It's almost like the external circumstances don't line up in this moment. Um, so your best effort is to... Um, that's interesting. Generosity was the theme of the week, wasn't it? Be generous. And we have the six of pentacles here, which is the like, you know, give freely to others and also be re willing to receive help. That is the give and take card. That is generosity. And the six of cups is sort of like generous, generosity and, and harmony in love and emotions. The six of cups also ref refers to or like points to the past, like the nostalgia that we have for the past. So this could be about some sort of like spiritual discipline that you have to overcome ideas around the past that maybe didn't live up to your expectations. 
there's a story that you're telling yourself that is creating a lot of white noise for you about what's true about your past versus what the potential reality or the outcome could be of a situation that really wants to be balanced. If you're practicing generosity, then you are using this energy to attract more abundance into your life and to attract more generosity back into your life. If you're not working with this energy, this is where we may feel more um, like we don't necessarily have all the pieces yet. I'm still getting like there's actually some kind of conflict here. I feel like it wants to be resolved, whatever it is. It's like it's it's more of a matter of time that this thing finds its balance and you or somebody you're dealing with will have to take a leap of faith. The King of Cups is also about like, you know, weathering the storm, whatever the storm is for you, whatever has felt unbalanced or, you know, maybe this is also just like, um, I'm not getting it this time, but last week it was, there was a lot of like a mental energy, you know, with the end of Gemini season, it was like the last influx of like ideas and mental alertness and like perception, you know, cancer is more of the kind of perception that's like intuitive and in our, of our inner world. And it's very feeling. So the King of Cups then, for me, I seeing the King of Cups and the Fool on the table, it's like knowing when to hold back your feelings versus knowing when to share your feelings versus when to hold them back. Um, and not in a deceptive way, but the king does have the ability to mask his emotions, to um, hold back. In this case, generosity could mean generosity of spirit, generosity of um, that freedom that we found last week or that we were seeking last week in terms of our expression can be linked to this as well because we're wanting, really what's wanting to happen is like this, this freedom of expression um, of our emotions and what is true for us so that once it comes outside of us, it can start to make changes in the world around us. Um, I do get the sense that this is potentially someone standing up for themselves um, because they're feeling very passionately about something and they're tired of the resistance. Once you've cleared your own internal blocks, you can move forward with this external stuff. Once you know your center, where your core essence of your value is, then you can go on to explore and take a leap of faith to go create some change in your world. The Fool. This is the start of a brand new adventure. Um, Let's see what the Wheel of Fortune is about here. Success, growth, the lovers, choice. So I clarified the, the Wheel of Fortune, which is sitting between the King of Cups and the Fool. What is this waiting period? What feels like a waiting period or like a, the karma being that you're like deserving of this fresh start? It's because you've successfully grown or expanded in some way that has created inner balance. The lovers is called the lovers. Historically, it is also called the, called the choice card. But it's more than just like to people or a partnership or romantic love. This is about your inner dualities, the yin and the yang. This is about inner balance, acknowledging the light and the dark within you. So this tells me that if this resonates for you, you found something in your life, some sort of practice, whatever it is, that is bringing you this kind of balance. So stay committed to those goals. Um, I feel like if, if you're, you're, you're building your own emotional resolve through all of this, and then you will be really, really well prepared for what comes next. 
You have prepared yourself for what comes next. Let's ask what comes next. Oh, some powerful cards here. The Ten of Cups, the King of Pentacles, and the Tower. The King of Pentacles is also the card of generosity. He's so powerful. You've like, you know, reached an incredible level of power within yourself, I feel, because the, the and this is contentment, emotional contentment, Ten of Cups, um, happiness, fulfillment. We had the Nine of Cups showing up a few times in the last few weeks, this like wish card, wish fulfillment card. We're wishing, we're we have a desire for something. This is telling me that it's happened, the change has occurred. This brand new start. Something that you've always wanted in feeling and in a physical sense. So in some ways, this could be the marriage of the spiritual and the physical finally on the same page here. But it won't come without, there's the tower again. It's coming with some sort of change. One more. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, it's basically saying that it's, it's going to require maintenance. This new life that you want, even though it's just the beginning, there's, there's, there's a lot of required discipline in order to keep yourself in the mentality, keep yourself in the growth mentality, that things are changeable. Things are... Uh, we're not letting go of one story, one narrative from the past to attach ourselves to a new one. Or maybe this, if this is about, you know, I'm seeing like sort of rituals, daily practices. This is about like what you're telling yourself every day. Uh, building up not only just your emotional resolve here with the King of Cups, but your mental resolve. The mental resolve that you are born free. No victim mentalities, um, no holding on to things for dear life, but just ebbing and flowing. And this is a skill to ebb and flow. And sometimes we forget that we have this power to be in like this, this state of being that's perfectly calm and serene and understanding of who we are, where we're going, seeing ourselves very clearly. That's the kind of inner balance that's showing up this week. And if you're not feeling it, it's because there's something, something about the South Node, our comfort zone. We think we will find harmony by sitting in our comfort zones when really we're being asked to step into that power and to realize what real balance feels like. Real balance feels like acceptance of change, acceptance of changeability, rather. So... Change can be gentle too. We can be, I feel like this is a really important time just to be gentle with yourself. Um, what was the question again from earlier? You can ask yourself, what has been changing gradually in my life that my perception is now catching up with? What, what are you finally seeing? I feel like you see an opportunity to take a chance. But it's going to be hard to... Hard. More or less hard. I don't even want to say that. I just want to say that even with new beginnings, the past is always there. The past is what makes us, has made us who we are. Those things that you've learned from the past are valuable skills, and you should use them. That's all. That's all I want to say about that. It could be hard. It could be easy. I'm, so I didn't want to, like, inflect that in any way, just that there is a bit of karmic influence here. So it'll be unique for every person. Um... The broad scope is um, that generosity will attract more good things into your life. So don't be closed off in your spirit, in your resources, in your mind. Just be open to uh, the possibilities. Um, let inspiration guide you. I feel like you can, there's a, there's a 
chance here for you to sort of become your own muse in the way that you interact with the world. Where can you find daily inspiration? Maybe that's what you could do is just like wake up, make, and I don't know, do some daily affirmations. That's like one idea. To stay on track, to stay focused, um, and to fully realize whatever this new opportunity you've been waiting for, I feel like is waiting for your saying, I'm ready. I'm ready to step out of my comfort zone. And I know and I trust that I'll be okay because I know where my fears are and I know how to keep them in check. Those are the skills that you've learned, the value of the lessons from the past. This new beginning energy uh, makes sense because we also have the new moon in Cancer uh, this week. And new moon in Cancer did actually show up on the table. You and your loved ones are safe. This is harking back to this container of safety that we've been developing for ourselves. Um, it's a, it makes sense to me, but the way I'll say it could seem contradictory. It's like we're building a container a place where we can feel safe so that we can be free to express ourselves, okay? And so I'll talk more about the new moon in Cancer in another video. Actually, if I've already made it, it'll just appear in one of these corners and you can check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.